going home sannyasi after the no sadhu. And he had lecture and speaker speaking Haripata continue. In this way everyone gave it. Otherwise so everyone coming together, being crowd, so following each other and dhaka mukti. They say no good things. So there is problem. So much better. Last time so everyone did slowly, slowly and speaker speaking Harikata. They said good last time will be Guru Kirtan. And eleven floor, I think ten thirty eleven. So two days no parikram, rest day. So Harikata is better. They are Guru Bharikata, everyone speaking all sannyasi, so I want this. And because the time, so last time everyone coming to your teacher and taking prasada, so much better people Harikata. And even if you see Bhogra, so I request them. Now, Kubira, when you work to more than you work, the Yama Chito Bhakti Bhajo Krito Ucha. So that frame of Bhakti Ucha can be produced. No more she grow, yes, the Dama Tari. Kubira, when you work, Kubir Putra Kubir Sun. No, Kubir, Kubir. He is Dhanapati, he is great man, he is treasurer all appearance in the world. So, Kubi, he is so not over Manikri. So, dear, Father is real, they are rich, oh, Dhanapad, they have brown, oh, I have appearance. So we are having influence, there is problem. In this material life, main problem is money. We are having money, there is problem. So now to our money crib life, proud come. In this way, they took sense in their with God. And did that, all bad character, bad things. They give disrespect to Naradas. Naradas is what they agree. But Sadhu become angry, Sadhu become merciful. Kindness. Then Naradas is told, okay, you did bad work, bad, bad things, bad karma. So in this way you are going. Your next life should treat life. Or you drink. No other thing, no salt tree, no saiwan, no uh, any other tree. So why become what you drink? And 36,000 years live in trees, trees life in Nanda Lopu. Why they live? Why become what you drink? In Bhagavatam, I explained many times. And I will ask the many uh, explain many times. Oh, Arjun tree is very beautiful medicine for the heart. Arjun addition. And Arjun, Arjun pill. So for the heart. So heart becomes a heart broken. Not to our money grip they have. They lost their heart. They lost their knowledge. In this way, Narada is told, okay, you can go and become a tree. So long time they live in Rajapuri. But Narada is again this. When Sri Krishna bound by the brain, Mata Jasuda is brain, at the time, opening your Bhankan Bhava Bhusha. Then you will be happy, can go. After that they become associates of Sri Krishna. Sri Dhakanta Madhupanta, they are Sriga. Then they become right, because they have problem. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Paradis spoke so many times. This is big problem. False ego. Proud, calling everything, and always headache and headache. 
in this way going to lost non over money grain going lose in this so there bhakti will gurudev told many many times for that in books were writing here yeah. so gurudev is who kunti devi prayed janma sarya sudha sivi रेध मान मद तुमा नैव अनंत भी धा तुम वही तुम अकिंचन गोचर खुक खुद अकिंचन श्रीकृष्णमेव सारो जेषा सैव देते अकिंचन जिनके जीवन में श्री कृष्ण ही जीवन का सार हुआ है वही अकिंचन कहलाते हैं और जहां बीच में कुछ गड़बड़ी आ जाती है तो वही प्रॉब्लम आता है इसलिए उनके गोचर नहीं होते हैं कुंती देवी ने ये प्रार्थना की कहा कि हे भगवान उच्च कुल में जन्म का अभिमान धन का अभिमान सबसे बड़ा अभिमान यही सबसे पतन का कारण है तो कोई बात आ रही थी बोले कि गुरु जी को मैंने देखा नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सिक्स गुरु जी जब नवद्वीप से आए मैं भी आया बड़ा मजा आया ना मुझे बहुत हंसी आ रही केवल चार हजार रुपये था और वो भी चुटला में जाकर के ड्राफ्ट बनाया बोले कि रास्ते में जल्दी चोरी हो जाते तो बड़ा हंसी आई चार हजार रुपये मुझे ड्राफ्ट बना कर ले जा रहे मतलब बोले चलो तो पत्रा में आया उस समय में गुरु जी की सेवा करने लग गया लक्ष्मण को चले गए थे तो चार हजार रुपये रहा वहां न तो पानी है न चावल है चक्कर है तो गुरु जी ने कुंजी भी अरे ये बच्चे सब आए हैं बंगाल से कि बंगाली है चावल खाने वाले तो थोड़ा चावल खर्च करके लाते तो वो क्या करते हैं एक किलो चावल खर्च के लाते हम खाने वाले पंद्रह जने हैं बोले चलो थोड़ा थोड़ा चावल तो मिल जाता है कोई बात है दोपहर को मिल जाता रात को रोटी खा लेते दोपहर को भी रोटी खा लेते चावल मिल जाता चलो ऐसे करके भी था उस समय की याद आती है उस समय की बात थी मैंने भी अपने जीवन में देखा पानी नहीं था हॉस्पिटल के बगल से पानी भरना पड़ता था रात को ढाई बजे तीन बजे उठ करके तब से पानी भरता था कि लेटरिन का पानी स्नान का पानी बाथरूम का ये बाथरूम के सभी को स्नान करने के लिए पानी कौन भरेगा खाना पानी की बेकार है सरो वहीं से पानी भरेगा बर्तन धोने का पानी रसोई घर का पानी गुरु जी का पानी ठाकुर जी का पानी सब का पानी भरो तो पचास साठ बार भी पानी भरता था और मुझे याद है कि मैं रसोई घर में किताब रख देता था ऐसे लाइट देता था तो एक श्लोक दो श्लोक देख करके चला गया दो बाल्टी लेकर और हिने खाता हुआ दो बाल्टी लेकर के आ गया दो श्लोक बुरा मेरा याद हो गया फिर देख के चला गया फिर आ गया था दो श्लोक और याद हो गया पचास साठ बाल के पानी भरता था पचास साठ सौ याद कर लेता था सात बजे गुरु जी को सुना करके तब नाश्ता देता था तो ये काम था मेरा फिर गुरु जी बोलते थे जा पांच सौ चतुर्वेद में पड़ गया तो दोपहर को प्रसाद दे करके गुरु जी को प्रसाद दिया गुरु जी आप आराम कीजिए मैं स्कूल जा रहा था भारी जाता स्कूल तो वहां से आता शाम को थोड़ा सा फॉल देता तो देने पर लेने के बाद में बैठ जाते पुरुष में हमें आ जा सब बच्चे बैठ जाते शुरू शुरू में था शंकुर प्रेमानपुर और मैं था उसके बाद में धीरे धीरे नंदनपुर आए फिर माधव महाराज धन महाराज और सब लोग आए धीरे धीरे करके तो उस समय क्या था ले एक एक किताब पढ़ो एक एक पैराग्राफ पढ़ करके सुनाओ हमें बताओ क्या समझा है और बोलने के बाद में फिर सुन जाएंगे तो ऐसे भी पढ़ाते थे और उस समय की स्थिति थी गुरु जी को हमने देखा कितना ही निष्पीचन रूप में रहे कोई पैसा नहीं कुछ नहीं तीन बजे उठ करके स्वास्थ्य पाठ कर रहे जितने संस्कृत के हमने देखा गोपी गीत रोज दिन रात 
गोपी गीत भेड़ू गीत जुगल गीत भवर गीत ये तो उनको जाना ही है नमामि नंदन नंदन और राधा कृपा कटाक्ष स्त्रोत्र जिम्नास्त्र जितने भी है सब पाठ करते थे और चौसठ माला प्रतिदिन करते थे गुरु जी तीन बजे से बड़े जोर से लाभ थे बोलते थे और बड़ा सुंदर लगता था कितना मधुर भाव था उस पर भजन का तो ये क्या है कि गुरु जी का भजन आदर से हमने देखा और क्या था कोई मतलब नहीं जितने साथ रहते थे सबको सेवा करते थे सबका आदर करते थे और ब्रह्मा जी के नाम जितने बड़े बड़े महाराज भक्त गुजरे गुजरे श्रोति महाराज कोई बचनाथन महाराज जाजावर महाराज ऋषिकेश महाराज भक्त दे माधव महाराज माधव गुरु साई महाराज चेतन गौरी मन के परम महाराज सभी आए कोई और छोटे ही नहीं कृष्णदास बाबा हमेशा आते थे और प्रेमान को क्या बोले भाई हम लोग तो बच्चे हैं हमारे तरफ भजन तो हो गया नहीं हम भजन साधन तो जान करेंगे चलो इन साधुओं का प्यार बन रहे हैं इनको इनकी सेवा करो चलो और हम तो लोग खूब सेवा करते उस समय क्या होता था फिर खूब आशीर्वाद देते थे हम तो जानते नहीं थे आशीर्वाद क्या होता था भक्त बुद्ध सोते महाराज जी आए कुर्सी और टेबल लेकर के बैठ गए नाट्य मंदिर में बैठ कर बोले बच्चे आ जा बैठ जा बोल वेदांत के बारे सूत्र बोलो पढ़ा दिया पहले पढ़ाने के बाद में बोले कि बोल खड़े हो जाओ बोल बड़े बड़े मजेदार महाराज मिल गए तो हम लोग भी बोलना शुरू कर दिए अर्थात वो गुरु जी के आचार्य जन्मानस जन्म शास्त्र जड़ित था तंतु समन्या निक्षत ना शब्द गौर से नाकू सत्ता युद्ध भजन गति समन्ना सत्पया आनंद मय अभ्यास बिना से नहीं कर पा सजा बोले हाँ हा हो गया अब परफेक्ट बारह सूत्र पढ़ लिया तो सारे गोविंद भाषा हो गया चिंता मुक्त कर आशीर्वाद देते थे ऋषिकेश महाराज है महाराज जी ने कहा गुरु जी ने कहा महाराज जी इन बच्चों को थोड़ा पढ़ाइए तो सिखाइए कुछ तो प्रवचन में बैठ करके बोले बच्चों बोलो नंबर वन नंबर टू नंबर थ्री कौन से नंबर का क्लास सुनोगे हमने कहा महाराज जी नंबर वन का तो पहले सुन लू कैसे नंबर वन का आपका क्लास है मैं सुन लू पहले इसके बाद नंबर थ्री देखेंगे तो अब उन्होंने शुरू कर दिया भरंत तत्व जज के आराम स्वगत स्वजातीय बीजातीय वेद रही तो गुरु जी ने पढ़ाया था बोले हाँ अब महाराज मिल गए बोले भाई नंबर वन का क्लास कैसा होता है गुरु जी सबका स्वागत करते थे सेवा इसलिए वे दौड़ दौड़ करके आए और वे मानवन छोड़ दिया है हम ये केशव महाराज जी के सिर्फ भक्त प्रकार केशव महाराज जी के शिष्य नारायण महाराज के पास हम क्यों जाए ऐसी भावना हम लोगों ने छोड़ दी हृदय खोल दिया दौड़ दौड़ करके और हम जाते थे उन लोगों के पास महाराज जी की हरी कथा सुनाते थे कितनी कितनी बात है क्या मजेदार हरी कथा मैं भी देखता था भाई और रसान को आए थे अभी धीरे धीरे सिद्धर मोहन और श्री सिद्धांत महाराज जी के पास में गए मैंने देखा भाई ये क्या महाराज है भाई ये क्या कौन सा सामने है भाई जो ये जुआर में चेयर में उनका जाम जो है इतने मोट मोटे मैं देख रही हूँ जोड़ा गया मैंने ये तो देख करके पेशाब भी निकल जाएगा इससे बात करना तो बड़े दूर की बात है कैसा था तुझे भाई बड़ा मजा आया और बड़े कम में लोग कह रहे हैं अरे कितना सुना रहे तो मैं भी बैठे बैठे मजा ले रहा था तुम आ रहे थे साथ तो ऐसे ऐसे साधुओं को देखा थी फिर और गुरु जी सेवा करते रहे और इन साधुओं को देखा जिन महान पुरुषों का जन्म भविष्य जो सुत कोई अहंकार अभिमान कोई भक्त गरीब मानो महाराज जी को देखा जब मंच पर विराजमान हुए तो पुष्पांजलि के लिए उन्होंने गुरु पूजा की करने के बाद में जब बैठे और सभी शिष्य भर को पुष्पांजलि देने लगे पुष्पांजलि देने के बाद में तब कोई बात माधव महाराज जी क्या बोले बोले कि देखिए मुझको आप लोगों ने यहाँ मंच पर बैठा दिया और मेरे गले में माला डालने लग गए आप लोग क्या कहेंगे इसके अधिकारी को कदापि 
क्या ये गधे को कपड़ा उड़ा करेंगे और फूल माला डाल दे क्या गधा को भगवान बन जाएगा तो ऐसे मुझको बैठा दिया इतने सही से बात है सबका छाते फट जाएगा सबको रोना आ जाएगा कि भाई क्या बोले श्री बाबू को सभी महाराज जी को देखा जब लोग सनातन में आए भागवत में भागवत सत्ता में और उनकी पूजा अर्चना भी बैठ गए इतने दृण से इस वृंदावन के प्रति भावना व्यक्त की कि हम सुन भी नहीं सकते छाती फटेगा ये सब गुरु घर के वैष्णव है जिनके अंदर में जन्म ऐश्वर्य सुत स्त्री कोई मतलब ही नहीं ये गौरी वेदांत समिति में क्या हो रहा है कितना मन रहे हैं कितना मंदिर है कितने लोग क्या कर रहे हैं नहीं कोई भी बात आ जाती है श्री बाबू गुरु साई महाराज जी करते थे बोले जा जा तुमने जाओ नया नया मार्ग के पास जाओ वो समाधान करेंगे तुम्हारा तुम्हारी बात सुनेंगे हम से नहीं होगा कोई भी बात नहीं सुनता त्याग कोई राज्य की मूर्ति श्री गुरु जी को भी देखा सभी को एक एक तो बोले कि जन्म ऐश्वर्य सुतस्वी उच्च गुण में जन्म लेने का अभिमान धन का अभिमान और पांडित्य का अभिमान मैं बड़ा पंडित हूं मैं ये हूं तो प्रतिष्ठा के राज्य इसलिए तो बार बार मुझे यही बातें याद आती है कि कणम कामिनी प्रतिष्ठा वाहिनी छारिया से जा रहे सही तो वही सब रूपा जी का ही कीर्तन कि ये तीनों जब घट जाए कणम कामिनी और प्रतिष्ठा इनसे हम दूर रहे बचे तब हम कभी वैष्णव बन सकेंगे आज तो हम उसी के शिकार बने हुए हैं माया में बने हुए चिंता कामिनी चिंता और कनक की चिंता अर्थ की चिंता और प्रतिष्ठा हाई प्रतिष्ठा तो इसमें हम तो मर रहे छत छत में हम मर रहे तो कहा हमारी भक्ति है और कहा हमारा भजन है इसलिए भागवत जी में कुंती देवी ने कहा उच्च पुर में जन्म लेने का अभिमान ऐश्वर्य का धन का अभिमान और विद्या का पांडित्य का अभिमान और श्री भी सौंदर्य का अभिमान हो मैं बड़ा सुंदर हूं ये चार अभिमान पतन का कारण विनाश का कारण जैसे जवलार्जन के जीवन में वही हो गया नारद जी ने आशीर्वाद दिया जाओ बेटे अपने कर्मों से जा रहे हो जाओ भगवान श्री कृष्ण शहर प्रेम के बंधन में रह करके तुम्हारा बंधन छुड़ाएंगे और तुम्हारी सदगति होगी नारद जी का कृपा आशीर्वाद उनके जीवन में मिल गया तो वही उनके जीवन को सुधार दिया ऐसे हम लोगों के जीवन में गुरु कर गए हमें सदबुद्धि दे सदविवेक दे कि हमारी बुद्धि सुधरे एक समय हम के बाद भक्ति रक्षा सीधा महाराज जी के पास में अकेला टाइम पहुंच गया बोले जाऊंगा देखूंगा कैसे महाराज जी सबको देखा जिनको नहीं देखा मैं गया प्रणाम किया पूछा प्रणाम करते बोले कहां से आया बोले दिवाली रेडियो वर्ष से सारी बातें पूछी बहुत खुश हुई उस समय मैंने इतना भरपूर आशीर्वाद दिया बोले कि देखो हम लोग अब बड़े हुए हो गए हमारे भविष्य में तुम ही लोग हमारे धरोहर हो और इस भक्ति के और इस समुदाय की धारा को रक्षा करने वाले तुम ही लोग मैं तुम्हें आशीर्वाद देता हूं कि तुम लोग जीवन में पढ़ते फूलते रहो और जीवन में कभी मैंने लिखे हुए कुछ किताबों को देखना मैंने बहुत सारी किताबें लिखी ये बातें उन्होंने आशीर्वाद ऐसे ऐसे गुरु वर्ग को देखा और उनके आशीर्वाद आज हम भक्ति रक्षा मारे थे कि आवे भक्ति थी पर उनके चरणों में हम पुष्पाजलि समर्पण करते अभी मारे
Srila uh, Bhakti Raksak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj. And we would have the opportunity to hear from the lotus mouth of Srila Gurudev, his divine glories, and also from uh, many other speakers who would come and glorify him. So on this day I am remembering the moods of Srila Gurudev and his great reverence, his great uh, honor and respect that he showed for Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj. Srila <coughs> Sridhar Maharaj was one of the most prominent disciples of Nityalila Pravishta Sri Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj was very renowned uh, both during the time of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta uh, and also for all the years that he remained on the planet till his disappearance in 1988. He was very renowned as a great Vaishnava scholar in our line who was full of all Tattva Siddhanta and could completely reconcile and explain any uh, point of Siddhanta that would be uh, that would he would be approached by anyone. And in fact, he became like the Siddhanta Acharya uh, at that time in the 70s, 80s, that time period. He was the most prominent on the earth planet and even all of the other senior uh, great sannyasi uh, god brothers of his like Nityalila Pravishto, Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Pramod, Puni Maharaj, they would come and they would spend time and consult with him. Srila Bhakti Pramod, Puni Maharaj actually wrote a Vyas Puja offering to Srila Sridhar Maharaj. We have that in English language. Uh, and he there declared and accepted Srila Sridhar Maharaj as his own Sikh Guru. Hmm? So such an exalted personality had such high uh, consideration of Srila Sridhar Maharaj. And also our my beloved Guru Maharaj, Nitya Lila Pravishta Shishila, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, he also had this relationship with Srila Sridhar Maharaj. He made that very clear to the world, especially when uh, he came back to India in the early 70s with many of his Western uh, new followers and disciples. And for the first time, he sat in an assembly in Sri Mayapur Dham. Well, and his godbrother, Srila Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Maharaj, came and sat with him on the same Vyasa There are some very nice photos of that. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj uh, was introduced by our Srila Bhakti Ramta Swami Maharaj. He was introduced at that time. There's a very nice lecture um, and conversation which ensued between both of them. We have the transcript of that. And in that lecture, uh, our Srila Prabhupada was telling that this is my very intimate godbrother, Srila Bhakti Rachak Sridhar Maharaj. Uh, our relationship is very, very intimate. At that time, he also explained that. For many years, uh, Srila Sridhar Maharaj and I associated very closely together. This was during the period after the disappearance of uh, Srila uh, Saraswati Thakur and uh, when there was like around the late 40s and into the 50s. Uh, so at that time, our Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj was known as Abhai Babu in Gaudiamat, and he still was in family life and had his pharmaceutical shop, uh, and he was uh, living in Calcutta. So at that time, Srila Sridhar Maharaj had already <coughs> begun his uh, Gaudiamat, and Sri Chaitanya Saraswatma, he had established that in Navadvip Dham, and he would come and go to Calcutta 
and do preaching there and then periodically come and go. This is over a period of about 11 years. Mm -hmm. And so whenever he would come to Calcutta, he would actually live in the house with uh, our Shiva, uh, Swami Maharaj, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. So uh, he became very intimate with him and with his family members also at that time. And when our Srila Prabhupada was introducing him to his new disciples, Western disciples, he said, actually, Krishna liked him to prepare me for my preaching mission. In other words, here was one great Mahabhagavat who had just uh, accomplished the impossible, the inconceivable, of implanting Krishna consciousness in the Western world. Uh, and turning Westerners for the first time in history practically uh, on a mass scale into Gaudiya Vaishnavas, completely changing their lifestyle, uplifting them, purifying them, and starting a worldwide movement. Uh, and now he has come back to India with his Western disciples, and now he is displaying them in India, and now introducing them to his godbrother and his godbrother to them. And here he's telling that I'm giving all credit to my godbrother, Srila Sridhar Maharaj, because Krishna arranged that he would prepare me for my preaching. What did that mean? It means that Satatam kirtayam tomam yatantas cha dhrita vrataha namasyantas tomam nitya tushyanti cha ramanti cha That all the great Mahabhagavad Vaishnavas they love to associate with one another and exchange Krishna Kata. Bodayantak parasparam, also always enlightening one another. Uh, and satatam kirtayantam, always constantly engaging, 24 hours in glorifying me. This was their relationship. But Srila Sridhar Maharaj had a very special uh, role to play not only at that time, but later on as well, because his intimate connection with the Western world began from the time when Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur uh, elected him, selected him, to go to the Western countries for preaching, where no Vaishnavas had ever gone. There's a whole story, I won't go into detail, but eventually uh, another Vaishnava was sent, Srila Bhakti Hridayi Bhan Maharaj to the England and Germany and he was the first preacher from the Gaudiya line to represent the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the West. But Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he had a particular nature and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he commented later that why he wanted him to go because he said, I knew he could not be converted. In other words, to go alone to the Western world was not a very easy task in those days. Uh, and actually, Srila Sridhar Maharaj remembers a very unique incident that took place when uh, Bhakti Hridayi Bhan Maharaj was returning uh, back from India, from, uh, from uh, England, his first trip back. And he was arriving in, Boston, uh, in Bombay, so it so happened at that time that Srila Sridhar Maharaj was preaching there in Bombay along with one of his godbrothers, Bhakti Saranga Goswami Maharaj. He tells the story. And, and also Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj who was still in household life at that time. So Srila Sridhar Maharaj told that at that time they wanted to establish a Gaudiyamat in Bombay. Uh, so he said that they formed a uh, a threesome to go out preaching and he said that they each played a particular role in their preaching so what it was is that uh, our Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj he had many business contacts in Bombay due to his pharmaceutical business so he would uh, bring these other two Vaishnavas with him Bhaktisarana Goswami Maharaj and Srila Sridhar Maharaj and they would go to visit the offices of these different industrialists and so the, they would do it in such a way, so our Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, he would introduce 
uh, these Vaishnavas had introduced. And then, uh, then Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he would preach. He would do the task of preaching to them. And Bhakti Saranga Goswami Maharaj, then he would canvass for the donation. <laughs> so in this way, they were able to make some headway together as a preaching team and to uh, establish some Gaudiya Math there in Bombay. So Srila Sridhar Maharaj remembers actually the very time when Bhakti Vrindai Ban Maharaj was returning. It was a very exciting moment, we can just imagine. In those days, they were, of course, coming by ship. Uh, so he was returning back on the Bombay side. And there was a, a gathering to receive them, whatever uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavas were there. So Srila Srinivas describes that both he and our Srila Swami Maharaj, they were especially anxious. Why? Because this is the first time that the Gaudiya Vaishnavas had gone to the Western world to preach, they want to know what was the experience that you had? What was it like there? Uh, so he describes that they were sitting together in a room, the three of them. And who are these three? Srila Swami Maharaj had also been told to preach in the English language in the Western world. Srila Sridhar Maharaj had also. And both of them were very expert in English language. And so now Van Maharaj has come, Srila Van Maharaj, and now they're, they're asking him. So Srila Sridhar is told that at first when they greeted him, they were a little bit um, like surprised, not surprised, but they were just wondering because he had changed his dress. He was not wearing his sannyas beige. He was wearing coat and pants. So some modification had come like this. But anyway, they were very anxious to hear. So then they sat him down and they questioned. They said, so what was it like to preach there in the West? And actually, Bhakti Hridayat Bhan Maharaj, uh, at that time, his tactic in preaching was to try to go to the intellectual circles in Europe, the high aristocracy. And he actually, he was successful to some extent, but he was not really able to make them into Vaishnavas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so they questioned to him, please, you know, tell us what was your experience. So, in the course of his narrating his experience, he told, <coughs> he said, there, these persons, they actually ask many questions, which are very difficult to answer, very difficult philosophical questions to answer. Uh, somehow, some of them were a bit stumped. We cannot answer them. So then Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, he said, Oh, what questions they're asking? So then Srila Bhan Maharaj, he began to describe one of these philosophical questions. Srila Sridhar Maharaj heard that. And then immediately he began to give his answer to such a question. And, you know, he took... He, I, in the narration, he didn't explain what the questions were and what his answers were. Uh, but he was just explaining that, oh, uh, he immediately answered that question. Philosophically sound, logical, perfect. Uh, and then, then he said, any other questions? And then he began to tell another question, and then another question. And in this way, one by one, Srila Sridhar cut uh, with perfect arguments all these questions and established the Gaudiya Siddhanta uh, perfectly. So then, there was no more questions. Srila Bhavara said, no, no, no other questions. And then at that time, Srila Swami Maharaj, he stood up in that little assembly, and he said, today, uh, Europe has been conquered by Asia. <laughs> so, you know, the British, they had come, you know, and the Europeans had come and conquered India and sub sub subordinated India. Uh, but the fact is, they could never actually conquer India. Why? Because this is the land of the highest truth, Param Tattva, all knowledge, all saintly persons. They didn't even scratch the surface of India. 
But now the Gaudi of Vaishnavas are taking this perfect philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and going to the West. And as Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur declared, he says, Western civilization must be crushed. And that's exactly what, our, what he did, what our Gaudi of Vaishnavacharyas did. Even our Srila Swami Maharaj went to the West and he said that the problem with Western civilization is the bogus atheistic scientists who have propounded these bogus theories of Darwinian theory that everyone has evolved from one-celled living entities and coming from apes and finally to human beings. And the whole Western civilization, all the materialistic, atheistic civilization of impersonalism and voidism and atheism, it's all based upon this bogus uh, so-called preceptors. The Western society has become so enamored, thinking that the scientists, they're like God, huh? or they're like the supreme masters, gurus, they have all knowledge. So everyone becomes subservient to them, yes, yes, yes. So what did Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj do when he went to the West? He had one disciple, Bhakti Sarup Damodar Maharaj, who was a PhD in science. Huh? And so, when he first came in the early 70s, they used to go for walks on the ocean front in, in California. And Surup Damodar Maharaj used to fire so many of these, uh, you know, scientific Western conceptions, you know, atheistic conceptions that there's no God and evolution and all of this. And one by one, he would tell them to our Srila Prabhupada. And all these conversations were recorded. And whenever Srila Prabhupada would be, he would like this very much, like sparring with the scientists. And he would take every single one of their arguments and he would just completely smash them, crush them, mutilate them, tear them apart, and throw them into the ocean. <laughs> so in this way, our great Gaudi Acharyas, they're very bold in their preaching. So Srila Sridhar Maharaj, he was such a great scholarly personality <clears throat> Even Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati called him Sarva Shastra Siddhanta Vit. He gave him that title, Sarva Shastra Siddhanta Vit. He had through all Shastra, all Vedic knowledge perfectly. So, but Srila Sridhar Maharaj used to tell about his own nature, about his own self, and he used to say that actually I'm a backward pushing man. He had this retiring kind of nature. And uh, therefore, he said that he wanted to satisfy his Guru Maharaj because during the time of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, there was very powerful preaching going on. And all the disciples, they were constantly being pushed to preach, preach, preach everywhere. Srila Siddhar Maharaj remembers when he first came to visit Gaudiya Mat, it was during the uh, Gaur Purnima celebrations at Sri Chaitanya Mat in, in Mayapur Dham. And he said, when he entered into the gate, there were so many groups uh, of Vaishnavas sitting with people, and every single one of them was preaching, preaching, preaching in all directions. He said it was like a beehive of activity going on, all this preaching going on. He was so impressed by this. So during the time of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he was pushing in this way. Uh, and as we know, after the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta, then there was a, a dark period in the Gaudiya Vaishnava mission. And there was so, many, so much breakup and arguing and fall down of, of uh, a person that they had elected as the Acharya and so on and so forth. So our Srila Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pratyam Keshav Goswami Maharaj, he again restarted the preaching mission and formed the Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti. Uh, Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, and, and many other God brothers at that time also joined with them and stayed with them for some time. But Srila Sridhar Maharaj describes that within his heart he had a, a very strong desire that he wanted to do very deep intensive bhajan in Srinabhadrik Dham. Uh, and he had to find some way to, um, to balance the mood that he knew Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur wanted of constant, very bold preaching, 
But at the same time, he couldn't deny his intense need and desire to do a deep bhajan. So he went to the birthplace of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. He tells this story in Sri Eka Chakra Dham. And there, he began to pray to Nityananda Prabhu because if he wants to reside in Navadvip Dham, then he must pray to the Ishwara, the Dham Ishwara, and that is Sri Nityananda Prabhu. So when he went there and prayed, he describes that he was mm, very intensively begging for the mercy and the blessings of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. And he said at that time, a very powerful voice came within his heart. And the powerful voice proclaimed, he said, you are coming to pray for mercy, but you don't want to give out the mercy. Oh, and this struck Srila Srinivarasa's heart very deeply. At that time he understood, all right, I have to make a compromise. So he said that was the beginning of his establishing Sri uh, Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, from which place he would preach to the world, and he would go preaching, but at the same time, he said, there my heart seva began. And actually, Srila Srila Maharaj continued to reside there constantly, but as I said, sometimes going to Calcutta and preaching and some of other places in Bengal he would preach. He didn't create a very broad mission. He had a number of disciples, but not very vast mission. So, Srila Srila Maharaj, actually, he wanted to become fully absorbed in the eternal pastimes of of Sri Gaur Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Namadvip Dham. And in actuality, he was always day and night fully absorbed uh, in these transcendental pastimes. And later on, uh, when our Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj came back to India, the two of them would visit occasionally together. And Srila Srila Maharaj would be very, very interested to hear about the preaching that's going on in the West. At that time, he was now become he had now become very elderly. He was not able to uh, walk here and there very easily. Invalid, his body had become invalid. And Srila Sridhar Maharaj, <coughs> he thought actually that he would depart from the world before Srila Swami Maharaj would. And there was one photo taken of their final meeting together in 1977. And you can see in that photo that Srila Sridhar Maharaj looked very thin and gaunt. He was, went through a very difficult period of health. Uh, but it just so happened that later on that very same year, our Srila Swami Maharaj, he also fell into ill health and it was the time of his divine departure from this world. But actually our Srila uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, he always wanted to bring, pull, even he told in his lecture, I always tried to pull him out. He wanted to pull him out, kind of like from his hiding, and, and expose him to the world. And in that meeting in early uh, 70s in, in my court, then uh, Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj went to meet with Srila Sridhar Maharaj, and he personally invited him. He said, I've come here at this time, you know, this was uh, just before his departure, and he said, I have come here because I am feeling the great need that I can consult with someone. Uh, because of such a great mission he had made, traveling the world in 12 years and making thousands and thousands of disciples, uh, but still, the great Vaishnavas, they want to also have their peers who they can consult with. So Shula, I, I heard this conversation directly with my own ears, it was transcribed and recorded. And at that time he said, I've come here to consult. I, I, I sometimes feel the need to consult with someone, but there is no one to consult with. So therefore I've come to you. Mm -hmm. And then he began to invite Shula Sridhar Maharaj. He said, I, now so many persons are coming from all over the world. They're coming to the birthplace of Mahaprabhu. We have established our Mayapur Chandra Diamond here. And there, uh, they're making one house for me to live in. 
my disciples are make, building one house. But I want that you will come there and live in that house with me. Huh? And I want that you will preach to all the people that are coming from all over the world. There are so many educated people, uh, very intellectual people. I want that you will come and preach there. So Maharaj, please give the word. You will not have to do anything of your own energy. You will not have to go anywhere. Uh, you can simply come. They will also make an elevator for you. So this way, in a very sweet way, and in a very um, pleading way, he was requesting Srila Maharaj to come. So at that time, Srila Maharaj being very ill, he also told, I will come there sometimes, I will come. I will stay here, I will come. Mm. So later, uh, not too long after that, uh, our Srila Prabhupada passed away from this world. Prior to his passing from this world, you know, here in Sri in 1977, he was lying ill in his room at the Krishna Balaram Mandir. I was very fortunate at that time to be also present for at least a month before he departed and every day I was going into his room and chanting Kirtan, that was my seva for him. And the Iskand leaders at that time were mm, thinking that perhaps he may depart from this world. No, none of us could really wanted to accept that, but yet it seemed quite imminent. So at, at one, one of the days before his departure, they approached him and they asked him, um, is there anyone else in this world that we can consult with if you depart from this world, anyone that we can receive guidance from. And at that time, our Srila Prabhupada mentioned, yes, you can go to my godbrother, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj. He is pure Vaishnava. You can get all guidance from him. So it became well known amongst those of us Western disciples who were there in Vrindavan at that time. The word spread to everywhere. Every time Prabhupada would speak so, 